welcome back to the channel everybody hope you're all doing well as i mentioned in the last video one of the our viewers Ryu, had asked a question about itbs and turbo cars so individual throttle bodies he had the question about tuning alpha in on a modern ecu alpha in is where we tune rpm versus throttle and the ECU does all the adjustment for manifold pressure. It's just not an axis that we use. So why would we do that? In an individual throttle body car, if you're not familiar, you have no plenum. You literally have a throttle per port, in this case, because it's going to be an R33 with an RB26. There's six little throttles, and there is a plenum on the top side of those throttles. You might call it an airbox, a um, few different names for it, but what it does is it creates issues with how much of vacuum the engine has, because basically you can go from small amounts of vacuum to zero very fast, because there's just no plenum going into the head. So let's jump into the tech. We're going to start by going to the Infinity software. And we're going to look at the fuel map for this particular car. As I mentioned, Tommy has an R33. It's a legit street car, makes 640 plus. I think the best it's done is 648. We'll, we'll see a dyno sheet where it made 640, still good power. I believe it's still a stock motor and has been for a while. Uh, it has some Tomei turbos on it. Obviously, it has an Infinity. It also has the HKS Valcon, which is vvt i like to use the term myvec but just because i'm a mitsubishi guy for the most part uh anyway it it helps it spool a little bit faster and when you look at the dyno sheet you're gonna be like man it doesn't spool very fast but trust me without it it really doesn't spool very fast so let's start with alpha in and we can see here this axis is throttle one percent to a hundred so First thing, have to have a very good uh, throttle position sensor signal because we're relying on it to do the majority of the fuel. So the boost comp or air fuel correction versus manifold pr pressure is all in the background. It's not something that, that we tune. We're just going to tune 100% throttle. Obviously, that's also going to be wide open when we're going to have the boost. And as you can see, it, it, it follows pretty accurately. So I'm going to start over here where the engine has started to decelerate and is on the trims. We'll go back to the beginning. But you can see it's idling 1,200 RPM, coolant temps 192, 4% on the feedback. It did have uh, smaller SARD injectors. There's a lot of JDM parts on the car. But... We have 50 kPa of vacuum there, and cruising, we can see it's 86 kPa, and that's at 20% throttle. So you can see how the vacuum goes away really, really fast. So having a modern ECU capable of quick fuel adjustments is very important. Closed loop feedback on the wideband makes this really, really simple. Um, Tuning it on an older system like Mega Squirt or an older Haltech or older Motec where you have to do all of that open loop, man, you're going to end up with my haircut. You're not going to have any hair left after you get done tuning it. But modern ECUs make it very, very simple. And I think as we progress through this part of the log, you're going to see that because we're going to be 100% throttle, the fueling portion of it, again, background, Haltech does this the same way, you really just don't see it. Uh, it leads for a very drivable car, though. So let's get to that. This particular car belongs to one of our customers named Sanjay. And as you can see, the, the axes are different. We got throttle position across the top, but still 0 to 100. And then RPM 0 to 9,000. This was a stock motor, so we only went 7,800. But you can kind of see a little bit more of the progression 
their fuel model is a little bit different, so we ended up with different delta in the numbers where the infinity you saw it was down in the 50s and 60s here and it was up into the hundreds near peak torque and towards full power this we end up down in well i guess it would be this column actually we end up down in the high 30s as this the car starts to cruise that stays pretty constant ve really hasn't changed too much you see a little bit here for the tip in there's a a little bit of a extra fuel as it drives made it really smooth and then as we start to move out the top these numbers should be decreasing this car had hks 2530s on it it does make peak power really high up so in this particular case it made less here and more here it wasn't really boost creep necessarily, but it was less torque down low, more torque up top, obviously more horsepower, required a little bit more fuel flow. Uh, something else that could have been going on in this particular car is the fuel filter, fuel pump. Some of it was a little unknown. So the numbers didn't get too out of control. So I just used this as the correction. We're not done with it. So it gives me homework. I'll go back through the logs and and look to see if i had fuel pressure differences but anyway it, it shows that it's pretty similar you might end up with different numbers which numbers are imaginary for the most part so we don't want to necessarily get hung up on those it's more where is the engine safe those are the numbers that we're worried about the actual ignition timing versus knock the actual air fuel actual boost level we might end up with some crazy numbers in here. This had some Tomei 555s in it, some old school injectors, which I don't really have any data for, so I had to guess on a lot of it. I could probably have changed this a little bit had I wanted to, but you can see from the boost curve, or the fuel curve rather, that the boost curve really did follow this pr primarily here. That it just or the torque and fuel requirements kept going up. Keep tripping over my words here. Anyway, so that covers the Haltech. Uh, it was an Elite, but I had updated it to NSP software just because it makes it so much nicer, connects so much faster. Uh, I like the data logging. If you do have a Haltech, I strongly suggest um, making sure that you use the NSP software. There's nothing to be afraid of. We're into revision or update five, I think, right now. So the the firmware just continues to improve. There's so many features. We've covered a lot of that in the past as far as being able to make custom tables, um, defining your own axes for things that you might want to do. So it's a, it's a great example of ECUs continuing to evolve with the market. Uh, you know, it's not to look down on the Infinity because I really do like the Infinity. The Infinity has a lot of nice features as well. Um, I love the data logging uh, primarily. I think that's probably my, my favorite part of the Infinity. And then being able to go back and look at things. Um, the Haltech, you can do that. It makes it a little bit more complicated where we have the big plots. I could set up my layout a little bit different, which... I'll be working on as the Cedric gets closer to being done. So anyway, guys, hope everybody's doing well. We'll talk to you later. Bye. So in the beginning of the log, we see the tip in section here. It goes a little bit rich. That's just because I had the wall wetting cranked up a little bit too much. Maybe a little bit too much VE versus throttle. We can see 97% here. It's suggesting 71. This isn't I realize it says final two, but I always take these things out on the street and double check this. So there were adjustments after this. I just couldn't find those logs. At any rate, for sake of discussion, make everybody happy. It wants 71, we'll give it 71. Just as an example of what it would probably want. And H, bam, done. As we come through though, we can see that the, the VE starts to ramp up real fast. 
I have 99 in there. It's suggesting 93, so it's pulling. So this might be a situation of where we do something like this. I'm going to retune a car just from the data logs. But watch the trims. This is the important part. See how flat the trims stay? For the most part, once we really start getting into boost, because now the manifold pressure is coming up, now we're 177 kPa, so we're actually starting to get somewhere. And this is one of those things, you got to watch your data logs, you can't be lazy. Obviously on that one I was being a little bit lazy and only worrying about wide o or where it was in boost. Obviously it's wide open, but where it was in boost. And as we progress, trims really do start to dial in once we get into boost. But the important thing here is if you've been watching the KPA, so 151, we're 2%. And I'm going to stop right there for a second. 235 kPa, it's zeroed out. 1%, getting pretty close, 1%. 250 kPa, 6,000 RPM. We can see the trims really haven't moved much. See up here, it actually wants even a little bit more fuel. So maybe, maybe it needed to look something like this. Get it a little bit more what it want. And then as we continue to roll through, now we're 280 kPa. We were on 110 octane, 284, 290. Really starting to make some pow. Still want some more fuel. So up here, it wants a couple more. That's a, the nice thing about a lot of this software. Whether you're using Infinity or Haltech, I'm biased to those two, of course. But you can go through a log, and you can just look at everything it's doing. Again, trims, 1%, 288 kPa. So really, hasn't moved much. I had forgot to turn the fan on, in case anybody's wondering about the coolant temp up here. We have dyno fans in front, and there was one of them that I had forgotten to turn on, so it got a little, little hot, but that's okay. It cools down real fast, as you can see. Just letting off it got into the 190s and i realized real fast that i had forgotten something so that in a nutshell is alpha n in the infinity now i'm going to switch to the haltech i'm not really going to explain a whole bunch on the the overall differences but just to show you're going to see the axes are a little bit different you're, you're going to see a very similar numbers though so let's switch to the haltech elite and how it tunes, in this case, an R32.